In this tutorial on SGEMS, I will be presenting conditional simulation with secondary data, and particularly focus on the co-located co-rigging methods. I'll be using this example, which is the exhaustive uh, Walker Lake data set, where we have one uh, variable, which is the DM, which is highly varying. And we have another variable, which is a low varying uh, variable. It tells you a little bit about average DM. You may have noticed the difficulty uh, in calculating variables, uh, in particular when we are dealing with very few data and where the data is very skewed. This is the issue that uh, we have when we did sequential Gaussian simulation or creaking just with one variable. So you can imagine that if we have more variables, uh, this becomes even more difficult. So what I'll do here is not work, uh, essentially extract the variogram information from the, the worker lake data itself, but look at some kind of analog that's exhaustive. And this is not an uncommon practice. So in practice, you may say, okay, what if I have a certain porosity model? What if I forward simulate on that porosity model some geophysical data? Then obviously, or what we can expect is that geophysical data will smooth out a lot of the porosity. And so this is what we supposedly have on the right here, is we have an example of the of this variable, an example of that second variable here. And so I'll be extracting all of the variable information from these uh, maps and then apply it into the actual world. And that is something that's quite common, uh, I believe, in many practical applications, where we're going to extract variogram uh, statistics or variogram parameters from other information than in our actual sample data. So we saw in the uh, YouTube uh, video on, um, on co-crigging and co-simulation that there is a particularly co-located uh, co-simulation, that there are two methods of or two models of doing that, the Markov Model 1 and the Markov Model 2. So the Markov Model 2 is the one that's most known in the sense that, as, as uh, what I described in the previous slide, is that our primary variable, Z1, is highly varying, so we have point data on that. And our secondary variable is uh, slowly varying, but we have exhaustive data on it. So I'd like to model this unknown truth, and I have these two information sources. The Markov Model 1 is uh, where we swap simply the Z1 and the Z2 variable. So the Z1 variable is now slowly varying, but the Z2 variable is higher varying. So what I now have is that I have slowly varying point data. I have an exhaustive uh, secondary data that's high varying, and I'd like to model this unknown truth. The Markov Model 1 is the most popular Markov model uh, because it's the easiest one to do. However, I have to be very careful in applying it in reality. In reality, we have to apply it under these situations where the Z1 data is slowly varying and the Z2 data is highly varying. So we would not apply to the porosity geophysics case. In the Markov Model 1, if we want to do simulation, uh, sequential Gaussian simulation, now not with Kriging, but co rigging we then again have to perform normal score transformations. So here we take our analog data and we do normal score transformations and we observe correlation coefficients. So then what we do is we model essentially the primary variogram, is the variogram of this image here, because remember this is now primary. We calculate the correlation coefficient between these two, and then we multiply the primary variogram with the correlation coefficient to get the cross variogram. And once I have the primary variogram and the cross variogram, we saw in the uh, YouTube uh, video or tutorial on uh, co-crigging, then I have enough to do co-located co-crigging. I do not need a secondary variogram. And then we saw that, that indeed, uh, here we see the, the modeling of the primary variable, uh, which is fairly simple. Uh, in this particular case, and gave us a, a particular model. And then we did uh, SGSIM and co SGSIM. So this is the primary variable, just SGSIM. Now we have the secondary data, and we do not have co SGSIM. Okay, so now I come to the second situation. Uh, the second situation is where our primary variable is highly varying and our secondary variable is slowly varying, and that's the Markov Model 2. And that Markov Model 2 is a little bit more difficult uh, to model than the Markov Model 1, which would only require a primary variogram and a correlation coefficient. So MM2, how does it work? So in MM2, we first model uh, the variogram of the secondary variable, uh, and then we calculate the correlation coefficient, which allows us then to calculate uh, the cross variogram. But we also need the primary variogram, and the primary variogram uh, is given as follows here below. You see that the primary variogram has two, two structures. 
It has structure related to the secondary variable times the correlation coefficient squared, and it has a residual component. And it makes sense because uh, this component is the slowly varying part, and we, we need to add a highly varying part to our uh, variogram in order to get a variogram that is a legitimate variogram for the uh, primary variable. So the way it then works is that we have to first model the second variogram. Okay, we already did that. And then we have to add to that this second structure. So let's see how that works uh, in practice. So in practice, we model our secondary variogram and we have now a variogram structure uh, for the secondary variogram, which is our Gaussian model with certain anisotropy. Then we need to calculate the primary variogram and we model that through the secondary variogram and this residual uh, component. So we say that our secondary variogram is this first structure, which we already saw that was in our previous uh, two slides, two slides ago. And we have another additional structure. So here's my square correlation coefficient. The square of 0 0.76 is 0 0.57. So then I have a residual structure and that residual structure has a negative effect, 0 0.1. And then I have the remainder still contribution, which is one minus 0 0.57 minus 0 0.1 is 0 0.33. Remember that I have a normal score transform, so my very, my still would end up at unity. And I bet, bet some fitting, I noticed that that residual structure is isotropic with a, a range of 33. So once I have that, I can do now co SG sim under mark of model two. So I have hard data. This was my SG sim. Now I have hard data and soft data. So this is called soft data or secondary data, hard data or primary data and I can do co SG sim. And as you notice, indeed, uh, the mountain ridge is much more uh, nicely reproduced in co SG sim due to the effect of the secondary data. Okay, so now let's see how that works in SGENS. Okay, so here we are in SGENS. I'm not going to show you in detail how to do the variogram modeling, uh, but do know, uh, because we covered that in the previous uh, tutorials, but do know that in variogram model, you would need to model a number of variograms. First of all, in uh, the uh, MM2, you would need to model the variogram of the secondary variable. So the way to do that is we go to the Walker Lake analog and we select the secondary variable and we go ahead, click now next and calculate variograms and model variogram for the secondary variable. So then um, you would have to model the variogram of the primary variable because the cross variogram is simply a product of the secondary variogram times the correlation coefficient. If you would need to just verify the cross variogram, you can also do that by selecting a head and tail property that are different. Otherwise, you would need to essentially calculate the variogram of the primary variable and do the modeling calculation and do the modeling as such. Okay, so here we are in SGEMS now, uh, and uh, we can click on simulation co -SGSIM. So you need to now see a number of tabs that are popping up. Uh, there are tabs related to uh, general where you want to simulate, how many simulations do you want to make. There are tabs related to our primary variable, um, which is uh, the, the DM variable, the secondary variable, and then of course the primary variogram and the secondary variogram. So we'll have to go over all these uh, tabs. The first tab is of course the simulation grid. Let's say we do three realizations. Uh, and the co-rigging, you have an option now. So in the co-rigging, you do full co-rigging, um, which of course is more difficult, more accurate though. Uh, Markov Model 1 does not apply in this setting. So in Markov Model 1, you'll get an easier uh, time in, in, in terms of the modeling. So we're going to do Markov Model 2. So our primary data is our sample DM data. Um, and we have our classical search neighborhood. And then we have to transform the primary variable. But because remember, we're doing still Gaussian simulation. So all variables, primary variable and secondary variable will have to be transformed. So this works exactly the same way as we did with SGSIM, is we specify the histogram by means of the data itself and specify a minimum and a maximum DEM. So then we look at the secondary data and the secondary data is uh, this data here, which is, uh, let me see if I can find it. So this is the sample data. And this is our secondary data, so Walker Lake through trend. What's often forgotten is that you need to transform the secondary data. So we need to make the normal score transform. I've done that here a little outside just to show you what that would be like, but you can also just do it in CoSGSIM. So we have to transform that. Uh, and then again, we need to specify upper tail and lower tail options. 
Cool, that handles the histogram. Remember that in a simulation, we are aiming to reproduce a histogram. Secondly, then now we need to reproduce variograms. So what are these variograms? So bringing you back to the slides, uh, remember that we first calculate the secondary variogram and model it. So here I've done that. Um, I found one structure, I have a Gaussian type, and I have this particular NS attribute. If I now go back to SGEMS, what I can do is, is, ta is uh, click on the secondary variable tab. And there I have the option now to enter the correlation coefficient, but also enter that variogram that I just modeled, the variogram of the secondary variable. And that would be the nugget effect was zero. And here we see those numbers. I have to make a slight correction here. Minus 30 uh, is that an isotropy and a Gaussian variable. Okay, so what's now left is only the primary variogram. And we said the primary variogram was simply the secondary variogram times the correlation coefficient square plus some residual term. So what I do is uh, on the right hand side here, I put in that secondary variogram and I model the other term. And so now I need to put this information into cool SGSIM. So here we are in cool SGSIM and uh, we click now on primary. So we put all that information that we just saw in here. We have a nugget effect 0 0.1. We have a, our secondary variogram, which is here. And then we have that additional structure with a contribution of. 33% uh, exponential and isotropic width range 32. So now I'm pretty much set and I can click uh, run to generate my weight realizations. Okay, so there we are. Uh, so let's have a look at those uh, realizations. So here I have the first realization. Um, I'd like to make that a little nicer uh, by lowering the maximum in my pixel plot and I find uh, this is my Gaussian realization. So you notice now nicely how this realization uh, is following that particular trend. And so you can then do many realizations just as before, calculate means and variances uh, as you'd like.